arrival in Moscow of America's Secretary of State Cordell Hull. He is welcomed to Russia by Foreign Commissar Molotov. Crack Soviet troops forming a guard of honor for President Roosevelt's envoy from the United States. Leaders of the conference meet in the gardens of Spiridonovka House. Anthony Eden and the new United States ambassador to the Soviets, Averill Harriman. Seated around the conference table, the four great powers are in complete accord. Commissar Molotov signing the document that sets forth definite proposals to win the war and preserve the peace. Mr. Hull signing for the United States. Foreign Minister Eden affixing his signature in the name of Great Britain. Ambassador Fu Ping Chung signs for the Chinese Republic. History in the making. The world's four great allies pledge to new and stronger bonds of friendship under the Declaration of Moscow. Back in Washington after his 26,000 mile trip, Mr. Hull is first greeted by his wife. To the nation, he brings a brief report on the success of his mission. Program contemplates the hastening of victory over the Axis powers and the preservation of peace and the promotion of human welfare in the post-war world. President Roosevelt comes personally to the airport to welcome home America's representative at the conference table in Moscow. The United States Marine Corps America's oldest uniform military organization celebrates its 168th anniversary. At the Capitol building in Washington, they parade for their commandant, Lieutenant General Holcomb, who presides at a ceremony honoring the men whose courage wrote history at Guadalcanal. These are some of the men who are pushing back the Japs from their last stronghold in the South Pacific. Today, the Marines present the battle flag they planted on Guadalcanal to the United States Senate. It flies as a symbol of America's first successful offensive of the war. Through the streets of Naples, the commander of the Fifth Army, General Mark Clark, rides to the Royal University. Summoned to receive the degree of Doctor of Political Science, General Clark is awarded the third honorary degree to be given by the university in 75 years. For Neapolitans, the occasion is momentous. It marks the rebirth in Naples of freedom of education. Modest and unassuming, General Clark accepts the honor in the name of the Allied Fifth Army. In Chongqing, Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten meets with Chinese and American military leaders to plan the strategy of war against Japan. He talks with Lieutenant General Stilwell, commander of American forces in this area, and with General Somerville, here to solve problems of supply. Arm in arm, General Somerville and the Supreme Allied Commander for Southeast Asia go for further talks with the Generalissimo and Madame Chiang Kai-shek. The United Nations presenting a solid front against Japanese dreams of world conquest. United States Army nurses receive their baptism by fire before they go into battle. Machine guns firing live ammunition send bullets inches above their heads. This is a part of the training every nurse must undergo before she is sent overseas.
landing somewhere along the coast of Italy, a new contingent of nurses wades ashore to join field hospitals near the front. American girls coming 3,000 miles to do their bit for humanity. World War II has brought hunger to many people. Millions are homeless. More millions are starving. That these innocent victims of Nazi and Japanese barbarism may survive to help build for themselves a new world is the hope of the United Nations. Planning beyond the need for such emergency relief as is now being administered by allied military authorities is the aim of each of the United Nations. At the White House in Washington, representatives of 44 countries meet to create the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Administration. Soviet Ambassador Gromikov signs for Russia. The document commits all to share the cost and responsibilities of rebuilding liberated countries. Here is the birth of new and closer understandings between allied nations. Each nation's representative signs. Lord Halifax for Great Britain. President Roosevelt for the United States. A document of significant importance to the oppressed people of the world. The president says... Coming after the declarations of Moscow recently, this agreement shows that we mean business in this war in a political and humanitarian sense just as surely as we mean business in a military sense. It is one more strong link joining the United Nations and their associates in facing problems of mutual need and mutual interest. 